Well, hello everyone and welcome to Meet the Experts. I'm Tim Barnes, one of the NCAR Science Education Specialists. And I'd like to welcome you to, or welcome you back to Meet the Experts, where we meet experts at the National Center of, for Atmospheric Research to do really exciting explorations into the Earth System Sciences. And we will be recording the session, so just so you know. And also, if you have any technology questions along the way and you can get to chat, just type in the chat and we will help you out along the way. Also, if you are needing captioning, we do have captioning turned on, so you should be able to activate that in at the bottom of your screen in the menu there. And we will get started uh, in just a couple of seconds. Uh, but I was curious if you wouldn't mind opening up your chat box and letting us know where you're coming in into us from today. So we have a little idea of who's here with us. And then we will go ahead and get started. If you have any questions along the way, uh, you could also just enter those into the chat and that will give us an, a good idea of when we should answer that question. If we don't get it in the moment, we will get it uh, closer towards the, the end. And today's topic, the sky's the limit, pathways to a future in STEM, feature two of the experts at NCAR that um, help help people understand how you might get involved. And today we're welcoming Jerry Sacconi, who is the NCAR student program coordinator in the NCAR Office for Education and Early Career Development. And we're also really happy to um, have joining us Virginia Doe, who is the Computational and the Information Systems Lab, or Sizzle, uh, Outreach Manager, and CyParg's Internship Director, and both do education and outreach on behalf of NCAR. Um, so I'll turn it right over to Jerry. Why don't we start with you? Thank you, Tim, and uh, thank you for having me here. Um, welcome, everybody. Um, just wanted to say that uh, a big part of what all of us uh, joining you today do at NCAR is help connect students to the science being done across the organization and the opportunities that we have for students to get involved in that science. And so before I talk about what I do, uh, I'd like to get an idea of what types of STEM or Earth System Science careers you're interested in or that you know about. Um, and so feel free, go ahead and type in the chat those careers, like I said, it could be uh, STEM or Earth System Science careers that you have interest in, interest in or just ones that you're familiar with. So feel free to pop that in the chat now. And while you all are typing in the chat, um, I'll introduce myself. My name is Virginia Doe and I use the she, her pronouns. Um, I'm the outreach manager here at NCAR and I'm the outreach outreach manager in NCAR's Computational Information Systems Lab. So it's kind of like the computer science lab of NCAR. And so we help the other um, labs with their computer science needs. Um, I'm also the Sci Parks Internship Director. So I run a summer internship program for college students and grad students every summer. Interesting, Ironworks. All right, what else do we have? Any other uh, comments as far as uh, Earth System Science or STEM careers that you're interested in or familiar with? If you haven't joined us previously, um, we do have, um, what's it called? We have planes that NCAR owns that we use to go out and do um, collect data for um, some of our research. And so we do need like mechanical engineers and things like that. So if you're interested in ironworks, maybe you might um, transition that to, to like mechanical engineering. Aerospace, very cool. Biology. Yeah. We have some internships where students work on instrumentation, uh, building equipment. Um, we also have some internships to where students um, are looking to see how climate change is affecting biology, um, aerospace as well, and our HAO lab, which is our high altitude observatory lab. Uh, and they do solar and space physics programming for sure. Virginia could talk about that. 
Um, as you just saw, there was a picture in front of um, the students in front of our supercomputer. So we also have a supercomputer that we run, manage, and maintain. And so that helps us do our science much faster. OK, we'll just wait one more moment to see if any other students would like to add their comments or um, career fields in STEM or, or system science so that they have interest in. Okay, we'll go ahead and and get moving then. And and so, part of why we did this and uh, oh, geography, absolutely, geography and meteorology go hand in hand. Um, it's one of the things that actually kind of brought me into meteorology was my love for geography. Um, but our point with doing this is that um, what many of you may not know is that we have positions and internships here at NCAR for more than just meteorologists, uh, atmospheric scientists, and climatologists. We also have careers and internships in engineering and computational science, mathematics, space and solar physics, as I said, and also in education and outreach, just to name some. Uh, all of us here in, uh, work in education and outreach in different divisions or labs at NCAR. And so as Tim already said, I'm the student program coordinator in NCAR's uh, Office for education and early career development. Um, I am also the NCAR Earth System Science Director, which is an 11-week summer program designed for undergraduate and graduate students with backgrounds in Earth System Science. And I also co-lead the Undergraduate Leadership Workshop, or ULW, alongside Tim, who started us off today. The ULW is a week-long immersive summer workshop that gives undergraduate students a chance to explore careers in atmospheric science and develop their leadership potential. I also coordinate and host the Professional Development Workshop Series alongside Virginia, which are a series of weekly workshops held over the summer with topics ranging from leadership and diversity, equity, inclusion training to science communication, data management and visualization, CV, resume and diversity statement writing. And these workshops lead up to a summer uh, poster symposium at the end of the stay for the students at the end of the internship where students from all of our summer programs have the opportunity to share their research in the form of a science poster with their peers families and friends, and also NCAR scientists and staff. So it's a great opportunity to do research at NCAR and then share the research that you're doing um, with the community. And then I also work with the Graduate Visitor Program, or GVP, and, and the new GVP, Pro, GVP Bridge Program, which is an abbreviated version of the GVP, uh, where graduate students from around the world can come to NCAR for visits that range from one to 12 months. And they come to work on research related to their thesis uh, with guidance from an NCAR scientist. And then overall, I help alongside others here with communication efforts across all of our internship and uh, student programs so that our program leads are supported and providing the best possible experience for our student participants. And now I'll hand it over to Virginia, who will talk a little bit about her position here at NCAR. So my primary role is working with the SciParks internship program. Um, we start out in the fall by asking the mentors and scientists for what projects they have for the upcoming summer. So this can be, you know, how to optimize or make the supercomputer go faster or maybe how to create a visualization for some of the information that we have, such as um, the sea ice caps, um, or trying to figure out um, how does the, uh, uh, the fire, how does a wildfire move? Um, so then we post the jobs and we start recruiting by traveling um, to go to conferences or virtual conferences to let students know about NCAR and our opportunities. Then we hold interviews and we prep for the interns to come in the summertime. Over the summer, Jerry talked about how we work on a workshop series to build the skills of the internship, whether that's leadership skills, um, how to create a poster, things like that. And then it starts all over again. Um, as an outreach manager, I also attend uh, local public events and talk about what NCAR and CISL do. Um, so for example, this week is a computer science and education week. And so it's happening right now. So go ahead and look to your local community and see if you can find any events um, that are based on the Computer Science and Education Week. I also want to say that um, just because we work at a science center does not mean you have to be a scientist. So NCAR has seven different labs and they're each doing different types of work. We also have people who help support that work, such as people in cybersecurity, administration, 
human resources, audiovisual, and so many more things. Um, so now that you've heard a little bit more about our jobs, we'd like to share about how we got here. So Jerry, can you tell us more about your path to NCAR? Thanks, Virginia. I'd be happy to. Uh, so I had an unconventional or non-traditional path to NCAR. I grew up in South Florida and from an early age was fascinated by severe weather and really um, the part of uh, severe weather that I was really fascinated by was hurricanes. Um, and after Hurricane Andrew hit the area in 1992, I knew that I wanted to be a meteorologist. It was my freshman year of high school, uh, just starting my freshman year, and um, Hurricane Andrew hit the area. And yeah, it, it, it made me so interested in tropical meteorology. And so I graduated high school and I started my bachelor's at Florida State University in the mid 90s, wanting to be either a broadcast meteorologist or a meteorologist at the National Hurricane Center. And primarily that was due because those were the most high profile meteorological positions in the area. Um, and so I gravitated right to, the, to them immediately. Um, however, once I was in the program at Florida State, I struggled, and in part this was because I didn't have much fi financial support and had to start working a full-time job right away to pay for my classes, uh, for housing, for food, and I had a hard time honestly juggling both school and full-time work, and so I ended up dropping out after about two years. And from there, I worked in the hospitality industry as a bartender, and I uh, grew really comfortable working as a bartender. I like working with people. Uh, and I ended up doing it for about 20 years before I decided that I wanted to go back to school to finish what I had started uh, in my meteorology degree. And so I moved out to Colorado about 10 years ago, and I enrolled in the meteorology program at Metropolitan State University of Denver. It's not a large program, but it's a great program. And so I found it was a good fit for me. Uh, and while I was there, I met one of my mentors, a meteorology professor that was also uh, a scientist at NCAR, his name's Scott Landolt. I applied for one of his student positions and I was accepted. And so while working for him at NCAR, I realized that I had an interest in working with the student programs over time. And so I started helping out with these various programs during the summer, one of which was Precip, which is a high school program that we had for our local high school students. And I had the support of my mentor in doing this, which really helped um, me feel like um, I was uh, I was being supported and, and able to try out new things. And so when I graduated, I applied for the new student program coordinator position here at NCAR and to my surprise was hired. And so now I'm able to take my background in hospitality and my love of working with students and merge it with my academic background in meteorology. And so it took me a little while to get here, um, but I love what I do and I feel really lucky that I'm able to bring my skills from my past uh, work experience into this role. And so I plan to return to school in the next couple of years to finish my master's while still working this position and with the support of NCAR. Um, and so now, Virginia, uh, would you like to talk about your career path? Awesome, thanks. Um, so unlike Jerry, I do not have a STEM background. Um, I graduated college with a degree in ethnic studies, which is similar to sociology, um, which is learning about people. Um, so I wasn't quite sure what I wanted to do in a career after college. Um, and so when I looked back into my time from high school and college, I really enjoyed working with people and community service. So I ended up pursuing a master's program in student affairs and higher education um, to continue working with students. So as you can see here in this photo, um, that was a, a dance marathon, which we raised money for pediatric um, cancer. So that was a 26th hour of, quote, dancing. Um, but so, um, I had an assistantship in the community service office and I loved it. Um, after I graduated, I worked as an academic advisor at a community college to help students on their own career paths. Um, so I, I was still able to continue working with people um, and kind of the community. I saw this position at NCAR to work with an internship program and I thought it sounded so cool. So I took my skills of working with people and transferred it to going out into the community and connecting people to the science at NCAR. Um, while my path was not focused on STEM, um, the skills I picked up along the way in high school and college helped me get to NCAR. Um, and and that's, how, that's how I'm here talking to you now um, in terms of just learning more about people and connecting and, and so all those great things.
Well, I would like to ask a question of you both. Do you have any tips for middle school and high school students and what they can do right now that uh, might help them if they want a career at a place like Amcar? Yeah, Virginia, would you like to go? You'd like for me to step in? I can start. So, I mean, one of the big things I really enjoyed um, middle school is joining clubs and getting involved in the community. Um, so I found my passions within community service. And so really being able to find and explore different ways. So whether that means joining a club um, at your school or in your local community, um, that's a great way to kind of explore different avenues and, and figuring out what you like and enjoy. Yeah, Virginia, I totally agree with you. Um, middle school is a great time to start thinking about um, and start exploring all the different STEM fields and earth system science fields there are out there. If, if NCAR is some place that you desire to work or participate in an internship um, as you go through high school and into college. And one thing for me, and as I talked about in talking about my path, when I first knew I wanted to go into meteorology, and I knew I wanted to go into meteorology at a young age, but when I first really knew that I wanted to go into it, the only things, the only jobs that really were visible to me at that time were broadcast meteorology, because we all have our own local uh, broadcast meteorologists. Um, they're very high profile, so it's easy to see that person go, hey, I want to do that. Uh, and then also because I grew up in South Florida and we are affected by hurricanes often. Um, the National Hurricane Center is located in Miami. So those are the two places that I gravitated towards. And I was like, I want to work at either one of those places. But And, and those are great places to work and are great goals to have. Um, but I didn't have the full perspective at that time of all the different STEM careers uh, uh, and positions that were, out, that were out there. And it wasn't until I went to college and started exploring more and I was in this student, in, uh, student assistant uh, position that I was able to see some of them at NCAR and, and see all the different uh, types of jobs like um, my job as a student program coordinator where I can bring um, my background in hospitality and my love for working with, with students and people and merge that with meteorology. That was not even something that was I, I, I ever considered was possible. So my tip for you is to go out there, explore, see what's out there. Um, even if you'd like to reach out to the National Weather Service or reach out to any kind of organization in the field that you're thinking about going into, emergency management or, um, uh, you know, for me in, in Atlanta, when I lived in Atlanta for a short period of time, I reached out to the Weather Channel and they were able to give me a tour. And a lot of times these organizations would love love to bring students in and show them uh, what they do there because they love seeing a student be sparked, you know, have their interest sparked in that field and and propel them uh, into, um, you know, a field or into education that fits those interests. Another thing I'd like to add on to Jerry was to keep an open mind, right? So what you are doing now is might not be what you're going to, you know, what you might pursue later, but um, just thinking about keeping the doors open and trying different opportunities. So keep an open mind about what you might be interested in. I totally agree with you. Well, I think it might be time to open up for questions. So go ahead and enter those into the chat. We'll, we'll give everyone a, a little time to enter their question. We had some good questions in the in the last meet uh, the experts. I'm I'm hopeful we'll have some more. Don't be scared. <laughs> While we're waiting, I can't help myself. What What is your, if if you don't, if you really thought about it, what what super pure, what superpower do you actually have right now? And maybe what would you like to have to do your job? Um, I can I can jump in there. What uh, superpower that I that I think I have that it that is really beneficial in this job? One is my um, organizational skills. 
helped me a lot within this position. Um, I like to stay organized. It, it helps me uh, in my process of keeping things together and being on top of all the tasks that are uh, assigned to me or that, that I have to do. So organizational skills for sure. Um, being able to multitask at times. And also I love working with people. And so um, I'm an extrovert. Um, I think me being an extrovert has served me well as a bartender and also serves me well in this position to where I not only work with a lot of different people across the organization for different things, um, but I also work with a lot of different students from diverse backgrounds. And so um, I, I think that's for me is, is probably my biggest superpower. I would definitely agree to that as your superpower, Jerry. That's like what you do. You're always so inviting and welcoming. But I guess for my superpower, like what I would hope to have is the ability to go super fast. Um, just so if I'm working on a project and there's something that I'm getting stuck on or, you know, being a little bit more, I need to be more efficient on something. So being quick so that I can, you know, do the stuff quickly that are a little bit less you know, exciting, but then it really enjoy the stuff that is um, fun. And looks like we got a lot of questions in the chat. Wonderful. Let's see. Uh, what qualifications do you need to have for high school opportunities or internships? Um, and, and that's really kind of internship specific, what they'll ask of you. Um, but overall, um, when I did work um, with Scott Landau, my mentor, and running the precip program, which was the high school program for uh, students interested in, in atmospheric scientists, uh, local students here in, in the um, Boulder Front or Colorado Front Range area, what we asked for usually was a statement of interest. Um, you know, why you would like to be a part of this program, what interests you about meteorology, what specifically within meteorology or STEM or Earth System Science interests you. Um, we like to see a well-rounded well student in that they um, participate in different um, school activities. Um, GPA, yeah, it, it is important to an extent, um, but you don't have to have straight A's to be in an internship. Um, we really look at the whole picture. We look to see, uh, um, you know, what your interests are, um, like I said, um, what activities are you involved in in school and maybe within your community. Um, and then um, and, and then from there, we'll look at your grades as well. But it's, you know, it's not going to keep you, in my opinion, and for the internships that I've run uh, that involve high school students, um, the, the GPA isn't the you know, isn't the final word for us. We want us to see if you're a well-rounded student and, and how much interest that you have in NCAR and, and, and how we can support you in that interest. I can take the next one as what's the favorite part of your job? So I really enjoy getting to know and meet the students every year. Um, so um, in the winter time, we do interviews and you start to get to see just some emails and sometimes you'll hear them on the phone for the interviews. And then when they come in May or they come virtually, that's when you get to meet them and get to know them. Um, you have weekly meetings with the students and, and, and go on field trips with them. And so um, getting to have that relationship is really cool. Um, additionally, a lot of times we'll have, I'll go downstairs to the cafeteria and I'll see a group of interns sitting together and I'll sit down with them and have a chat um, over lunchtime. So that is one of my favorite things about working at NCAR. How about you, Jerry? Very much the same, Virginia. I love working with the students. Um, our busiest time of the year is during the summer when many of our internship uh, and student programs are in full swing and, it, and it's a lot going on and it's long days. Um, but I love being able to work with the students and getting to know them and help support them in what they want to do and on their career and academic paths. Um, I also really love at this time of the year in the fall when I do recruiting and I get to go to um, I get I get to go to different science society conferences across the country and meet different students and different scientists and talk about our programs at NCAR and get those students excited about our programs. And one of the most fulfilling things for me is to see a student that I talked to maybe a year 
uh, or so ago, talk to them, talk to them about a specific program, and then actually see them in the program. Um, you know, during a summer or at a different time during the year. I, that's one of my favorite things to see in this role. I, I love it. We got one question is, how old were you when you felt comfortable working with others at work? Um, so I feel like I want to kind of shift this to say, um, in high school, I was in clubs and I held leadership positions in clubs. And these were like with my friends. And so being able to work with my friends was really fun. And so even though it wasn't a job where I got paid, it was a position in which I had to do work. Right. And so being able to work on a team with my friends was one of the first, you know, realize that I love working with people is really fun. Um, there are some jobs where you might not see people for too much time, but that's not a job that I could do personally. Um, but really figuring out that, you know, being able to interact with people um, on a day to day was really great. Jerry, how about yeah. yourself? Yeah, for me, I would say when I was in about elementary school, I, I was kind of an awkward kid. Um, I was a little bit uh, antisocial, I guess. Um, I didn't have a lot of friends at that time, and so I didn't have a lot of confidence in working with a, a large groups of people. And then as I started moving into um, middle school and then into high school, I, I started becoming much more comfortable with myself and working with other people and started doing what Virginia did and joining different organizations and kind of finding my voice um, over time. I want to say um, that not everyone, uh, you know, I stated out I'm an extrovert. Not everyone is. You don't have to be an extrovert by any means to be a scientist or work at NCAR, but it is important to learn. I'm not an learn extrovert. How... <laughs> <laughs> to me, you, to me, I kind of think you are, but no, I, 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 I get you, Virginia. Um, I just wanted to say that while being an extrovert is not a necessity in, in being in a STEM or Earth System Science career, the ability to work to work well with others will come into play over time. There'll be times when you'll be working by yourself. And sometimes I enjoy working by myself, even though I'm an extrovert. But being able to work with different diverse groups of people is important, whether you're in STEM or system science or really any field, quite honestly. And then what clubs were you in when you were in school? So one of the clubs I was in was called PAL, Peer Assistance and Leadership. And we did, we practiced mediation scenarios. Um, and so I had a leadership role in that when I was one of the PAL co-presidents. Um, so that was one of the ones that stand out most. I was also in a few community service groups. One was the Key Club, which was, I think, short for Kiwanis. Um, and so we did a lot of beach cleanups and things like that. Um, Jerry, how about yourself? Yeah, I did um, Florida Future Educators. Um, I did student government. Um, and then I uh, was heavily involved in, in, in band, marching band, uh, concert band, jazz band. I did chorus. I did drama uh, club. Um, I, I, I wanted to be involved in everything <laughs> when I was in high school, basically. And so, you know, not all of those things are, you know, are directly related to me meteorology, um, but they all helped in me being comfortable uh, working with other people and learning about myself, you know, who I am and, and what things I wanted to do as I got older. We got a tough question. How did COVID affect our work? So I'm going to say greatly, as it did the whole world. Um, so like we mentioned, usually our interns come to Boulder in person and they stay at our house at our um, local housing nearby. And so this, um, the past two years, the students were not able to travel to Boulder for this internship. So we held the internship completely virtually. Um, so that's where all those Zoom boxes, um, Brady Bunch family photos are, are pretty prevalent. Um, and so, so, with COVID, we had to switch our gears and figuring out how do we still create um, a really immersive program for our students. Um, and so that's where Jerry and I worked together um, to figure out what that would mean. Um, so we moved all our programs virtually. Yeah, and, and I'm, I'm sure your teachers that are here with you today and ones that are not can fully relate to this because they had to do this as well. And they probably had to do it within short order because, um, you know, COVID happened and a lot of places started locking down. And for us, it that was happening 
uh, right before our summer programs were getting ready to start. So we had to pivot quickly and learn um, how to be able to support students in this virtual environment. Luckily, we have a division of NCAR called Comet that really specializes in educational resources uh, online. And so we uh, brought in some of those experts to help us learn some tools and platforms and, and tips on how to run a program like this in a virtual setting and to really be able to support our students in doing so, trying to create the connections as best we could um, that were missing from in-person programming. Um, I, there's one question I, that asks, uh, do you do any research on the sun and can you predict when it will die? I personally don't do any research on the sun. There is work being done at NCAR that involves the sun. Um, I don't know when the, the sun is um, uh, pl planning to extinguish. I know it's not anytime soon, um, not in any time where... Uh, you know, while any of us will be alive. Um, but um, if you'd like some further information about that, feel free to, you can reach out to me at my email address and I can reach out to a scientist in our uh, high altitude observatory lab and maybe get some answers for you. I'm gonna put my email in the chat. And then there's a question of, do any artists work at NCAR? And I guess, I want to be loose with the term artist. So for example, we have people who create visualizations. And so when the scientists go out and they collect data um, and they want to be able to communicate that or they can tell the story about what they learned, um, many times they're gonna to have to create a visualization. So for instance, um, they want to show about the ice caps the changing of the ice caps. And so they, someone has to create what that looks like so someone can understand how the ice caps are changing. Um, and additionally, um, we have people here who are singers and that's a form of artistry. And so there is one um, uh, art, there's a one the educational exhibit that has um, music that is um, connected with climate. And so when you press a, you know, uh, a day, um, you can see what that might quote sound like. And so they connected those sounds um, with climate. Yeah, we also just to, to add to that, we also have some employees here that have that that wear multiple hats. Um, for an an office that I work in, in education and outreach. Um, I have an administrative assistant that I work with closely named Alia and. Uh, they have uh, great skills and graphic design, and so um, they jump in and help at times when we need to create flyers or need to create uh, pamphlets to take to those recruiting events like I'm going to be doing in New Orleans this coming week. And so to make our, you know, our flyers stand out in a sea of other organizations and other flyers. So when a student comes up and they go, wow, I, this internship really looks cool. Um, I want to be a part of it. Um, we have help in doing that because <laughs> not all of us are great <laughs> at, at being able to put things together visually. So there is there are places uh, at NCAR for people that have artistic backgrounds. There is another person um, on Jerry's team who I know is very good at crocheting and she like sells her art and stuff and she makes uh, jewelry and I always love her seeing her stuff. Oh, Lorena. Yeah, Lorena, we, we do a Christmas um, kind of like a Christmas crafts shop at NCAR um, to where one of our one of our facilities on our campuses. Um, we open up one of the buildings and, and artists that also work at NCAR uh, can show some of the stuff that they do, arts and crafts stuff. Some of it is really cool and we get to go, uh, it's right before the holidays and we get to go and find some really unique kind of gifts for Christmas or for the holidays for family and friends. Um, got a question, do you, Sure. Yeah. Go do you ahead, travel Jerry. for your job? Yeah. For, for me, I do travel. It is part of what I do. It's part of what I love to do um, as part of this job. And so the fall during this time of the year and into winter, um, I travel at different society, uh, science society meetings like the American Meteorological Society meeting, which is in January, the AGU or American Geophysical Union uh, meeting, which is uh, starts next week on Monday. So I'll be traveling to New Orleans um, on Sunday and we'll be there for a week. And while I'm there, I'll, 
I, I, I'm going to be presenting um, a, a poster on the ULW, the Undergraduate Leadership Workshop that I said I work with Tim on. And also we'll just be meeting students in different networking events to tell them about all the opportunities that we have here at NCAR. Short answer is yes. <laughs> <laughs> it was Wonderful. in Phoenix before and then and the, they change constantly so always going to new places yeah well I'm, I'm really really happy to hear all of these the answers to these this broad set of questions but uh Jerry and uh Virginia do you have any any final advice any final words that you'd like to share before we do finish up this episode of Meet the Experts? I want to start with just get involved and try new things. Um, and you might be surprised to find the things that you really enjoy. Yeah, explore, see what's out there, see what things interest you and, and dive into them. Um, try to find out all the different fields that, you know, come along with that interest all the things that you could do as a professional. Maybe even, I know many of you were in middle school, but start thinking about maybe if you have an idea of what you wanna do, start looking at possible schools um, that have programs that could support you when you go into college, if that's something that you would like to do. You know, keep an open mind along the way and don't hesitate to reach out to um, those organizations and companies, like I said, um, the National Weather Service or the Weather Channel or, or here like NCAR, feel free to reach out to us if you have any questions. We're here to support you. We're here to answer those questions and we're here to bring you into, you know, Earth System Science and STEM as much as we can. Oh, excellent, everyone. I think we are just about at the end of our time and I'd like to thank everyone again for joining us, uh, Virginia, Joe and Jerry Ciccone at NCAR and Education and Outreach. Thank you so much for being here and sharing. And I know that we did lose one of our uh, participant groups already, uh, but thank you for all your questions. And uh, we're glad that it's helpful. I see that it, uh, you feel that it's helpful. We're really uh, happy to hear that. And uh, Meet the Experts will continue into the year 2022. So next month you can join us on January 27th for Storing science for supercomputers. What could that possibly be about? And uh, so we'll see you then. Thank you so much for joining us. Bye.